very good morning to all of you friends and uh, let's bow our hearts together committing this time to the lord and asking his help to understand his word and to apply and to be like christ in our lives in our walk here on this planet earth father we bow our hearts before you and we give thanks to you for you are our god you are the director of our lives you are the one who makes our lives meaningful purposeful we look to you even this morning lord as we study your word together that we might be strengthened we might be cleansed by your precious blood as we read your word this morning lord we thank you for you hear our cry you hear our prayers and you are faithful to answer commit all those who may listen to this word lord that their hearts might be open and receptive and they will respond to it thank you holy spirit for being with us for we ask this in jesus name amen amen and amen friends we are in the book of revelation for a couple of weeks we shared with you about the seven churches from chapter 2 and chapter 3 and uh, last sunday we heard from heaven again we heard the word of the lord proclaims that the heavens door was open and he calls the the lord god calls John the apostle hears a voice calling him up come up here and now he goes up and that's a beautiful picture that we see and the, and the stage was set last sunday in chapter 4 to see and experience heaven we saw the throne and the rainbow around the throne and crystal sea before the throne You remember we looked into four or five areas as pastor Ravil shared with us the first thing that we saw was a open door that's what we heard open door that is the grace of god still inviting door is open still calling and the lord wants his people to come in and secondly we seen the characteristics of god through all those the 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 stones you know the jasper sardius and also the rainbow and all these uh, symbols were given for the character of our god and then thirdly we seen the the activity of the holy spirit in heaven and also we finally saw the acknowledgement of the elders and her, the worship began in heaven so this is a beautiful story beautiful story that is revealed to us about heaven and you know very colorful as this writer presents it very colorful it's a very clear picture of what heaven is like now we come to one of the key moments of god's redemptive purposes for all creation that is revealed to you and me in the book of book of revelation chapter 5 very important chapter as we study this together very important picture and there's a beautiful story in it as we look into it chapter 5 really is so big it's gigantic it's very important to understand chapter 5 and in this we see what really is going on in the world you and i know that the world is in utter chaos today the pandemic on one side and the lives are being fallen apart on the other side the evil and the wicked is increasing the world is in a chaos so chapter 5 reveals to us while we experience now you see chapter 4 and 5 tells us about heaven 
And now, chapters 2 and 3 informed us about the church history. All those seven churches. And we are in the last church, the seventh church, that is Laodicea. And this is, still we are in the church era. Because the, the church is not taken up yet. But there comes a day the Lord is going to rapture, take the church up. And that's going to be a wonderful day that we can think of, I'll tell you. It's going to be a wonderful day. And now Apostle John is in heaven as he writes this. The vision that he sees about heaven. And he's in heaven. He's taking a, he's taking a tour around and he's seeing things now. He's taken up. And in this we see what really is going on in heaven and also on the earth, on the other hand. The real meaning of your life, the real meaning of our lives are given, presented in this chapter as we study it together. So let's take a look at the divine redemption plan that Lord God has planned for humanity and for his universe. This is the universe that we live in, created by God, and it is his universe. So there, Apostle Paul says there, he saw the throne of God and the court of heaven. Now, he's in the throne room, and this is exactly what we need to understand too, that we also need to be in the throne room now. There is worship going on there. Worship of the Creator. And now that theme changes again and begin to worship the Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it is both our duty and privilege to worship the Lord God because all, all that we have, you just name anything, your life, your talents, your abilities, your gifts and all, just name it. They come from his creative power, comes from his hand. So dear friends, let's be thankful to him, grateful to him. But the greater theme in the scripture that we see is the redemptive love that is shown to us. As we are in heaven, as we are seeing these things together. So, in chapter 5... Apostle Paul, Apostle John, sorry, guesses and he sees the returns to the throne of God and he sees the strange sight which he describes in these opening verses. We must remember that we are dealing excuse, exclusively with prophecy now, okay? Everything we will talk about is about the future. Jesus Christ is the central figure in this chapter also. So let's read the scripture and let's open our hearts to the Spirit of the Lord to minister to us. And I saw in the right hand of him, I'm reading from chapter 5 verse 1, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. Verse 6. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, 
which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. So you were sl for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Verse 11, Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such, are, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor, the glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, to, said, Amen, and the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. And this is the word of the Lord. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word into our hearts this morning. Friends, the picture is that Apostle John is in heaven and he sees Something very mysterious. Something very... He couldn't understand what it was. He saw the throne and he saw one seated on the throne. And then he saw the one who seated on the throne was having a scroll. scroll that was a rolled up paper. And that he was holding into it and the, and the Lamb of God and the Lamb was there at the right hand of the Father, at the right hand of the throne. And here we see a very clear picture about the scroll. So this, this whole of this chapter is talking about the redemptive love of Christ. <coughs> and as I told you in the beginning. So when we, when we read this story, and it's a, it, it involves a scroll. And the writer says, uh, there was something written inside and also on the back of the scroll and it was sealed with seven seals. And uh, many writers and uh, Bible scholars and you know they, when, when, when they, they, they say that this was, this was the title deed for the earth. And why? Actually why? We need a title deed for the earth and it is the title deed that was that was held by the one who was sitting on the throne as John sees in heaven in the title deed something was written inside and is something was also written on the outside that's very interesting when you do that study and understand what it is all about. When God created the heavens and the earth and he created Adam and Eve, he created them perfect. And he gave them all authority. All authority. And he said, you replenish, you multiply, and you subdue the earth, is God said to Adam and Eve. But you know, once they listened to the evil one, and they were tricked, and as a result of that, they lost all authority that was given to them by God. They lost it all. 
what was given to them was given over to Satan. That's what we read here. So the scroll that the Lord God has in his hand, seated on the throne, tells us all about the title deed. You know, for every land that we purchase, you know, there is a title deed, you know about it. And here, the writer reminds us that what was given to Adam, and it was handed over to Satan because they sinned against God. And as the result of that sin, they had to hand it over, give it over. And they, Satan snatched it out of their hands. <laughs> and now he's in control. He's the one. As Jesus says, he's the, he's the prince of the earth. He's given all the power on the earth. And Jesus says, the prince of this world is coming and I got nothing that belongs to him. John chapter 14, I think. And then also Apostle Paul, also in 2 Corinthians, he says that he is the God of this world. He has taken over all the rights. All the rights. And he rules and he reigns on the planet Earth. But you know the beautiful story. So when, when, when Apostle John saw this and he felt so bad and he was so sorry and he was so sad. And then he started weeping. Crying out. Bursting out in cry. And when one of the elders, uh, those who were seated around the throne, he got up and said, you know, one of the, then I saw a strong angel, verse 2, proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. Now this was the thing that John heard, and when he heard it, he felt so sad. Because that, that tells us about what's going on in this world today, friends. When we study this, we see what a chaos. The world is in utter chaos. We see that. We see that it, 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 the, even, the, even the creation, the, the Romans chapter 8 says, even the creation is groaning and waiting to be delivered. Apostle John was crying over this and he said, who can open this? When that angel shouted and said, there was nobody to open this. No one in heaven, no one in earth to open this scroll. Then verse 3 says, And no one in heaven or on earth, under the earth, was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much. Having heard that, he started crying. Because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. Friends, in those, we, we, those who are here on this planet Earth, living in this world, you know, a lot of heartaches, brokenness that we go through in our lives every day. We hear cries all over the place, wailing, weeping. People are trying to find meaning for their lives. But they are not able to found it. And they cry. A lot of weeping going on in the world. But verse 5. He said, But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose it, its seven seals. And here, this is a, this is a, a, a comfort for John, the apostle, when he heard that, don't cry. Why are you crying? There is one who is able to open this scroll and to reclaim all what we have lost to Satan. There is one who is able to do that. Talking about our Savior. And Jesus Christ 
coming in the form of a man to this earth, paying for our sin and, and took upon himself all the wickedness, evil, all that we have committed against God upon him and he set mankind free. And all those who put their trust in him is going to be saved and are going to be reclaiming. They, they are able to reclaim what, what was lost in their lives. So it's an amazing picture that is given to us here. So here, the, the church, we are still in the church era. Church is not uh, raptured, taken up yet. But in the vision, what John sees is church is taken up. So chapters 4 and 5, church is in heaven. Hallelujah. What a joy. Do you have that hope? Do you have that Assurance that you will be in the presence of the Lord one day, forever. Do you have that assurance? Please, please make sure that you have that assurance of seeing the Lord face to face every day in your life. All right. The world that we live in, as I told you, is badly broken. We see on every side. Heartaches and heartbreaks, broken hearts all over. I'm reminding it again because this is happening constantly. How? Through the social media today, see now the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and these things have become instrumental in, in breaking up families, you know that? You know the stories. How they see, how they visit this, and then how they meet up with an old friend of theirs, and how all these relationships began again, and how it has affected the family, and how these men or women leave their families and go and join in with their friends that they have found through the Facebook, you know? Yeah. That's happening all over. World is in a heap of trouble. They can't get out of this. That's the state of the world today. So when you understand this, you know, the, the scroll that is in the hands of the Lord, you know, explains. We have all lost it. Now there's only one person who is able to reclaim that and get it back. It is happening. It is happening in heaven, friends. That's the good news. So through this story, I just want to bring up uh, some of the characteristics of heaven, you know. Number one, the first characteristics, the first characteristic of heaven is what I want to share with you now. The first characteristic, okay? Heaven is an actual place. Heaven is an actual place. Verse 1 and 2. Verse 6. See, and I saw. John says, I saw. Then verse 2 again. I saw a strong angel. Where verse 6 again. And I looked and behold. In all these uh, areas, you know, the Apostle Paul says, this is what I see. So these are actual things. This is what he sees. Actual thing. What does he see? He sees a throne. He sees a scroll in the right hand of the one who was seated. And you know that when we study the scriptures in John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. John 14, 2 and 3, we are told, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Then, you know, Apostle Paul, that is what Jesus said. Then Apostle Paul says something like, again, um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Philippians 3, 20, Apostle Paul says, um, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul, a wonderful testimony that he had. You know what he says in Philippians 1.21? For to me live is Christ and to die is gain. Because he knows for sure where he's going to end up. For eternity. He knows where he's going to end up. So he has so much confidence. I think this is where we need to gather our thoughts and build our confidence and see what these writers say about heaven. It's actual place. Apostle Peter, he also says that. You know what he says? Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Wonderful. It is reserved in heaven for you and for me. And you know, it's not only Jesus, not only Apostle Paul, not only Apostle Peter, but we look forward to making our home in heaven. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 10 says, For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. This is what Abraham says. He says, for he waited for the city which has founded, which has, found, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Then verse 13 through 16 he says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Verse 14, for those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. See, this is our hope. Is this your hope as a Christian? Don't ever think that the heaven is not an imaginary place. It's an actual place. It's a real place that you and I are going to be one day. And, and, and while we are yet living on this earth, God has allowed us to experience heaven in our hearts today. You know, when, when you come, come together to worship and to sing and praise and give glory to the Lord, you experience heaven in your heart. Heaven is in my heart. Hallelujah. What a joyful thought that is. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 14 says, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Are you the one seeking that city that is to come? Don't lose hope. Yes, we have a lot of problems here in this earth. We are informed about it. We are informed about all the chaos that is going on in this world. We are informed about it by our Lord and in the scriptures. We are given enough information about this. But hold fast to your faith. Because this is not your eternal home. We are just passing by. We live in a temporal shed here. It's a tent that we are living in. But we are waiting to shift ourselves into a building that was made by God in heaven. That's what Jesus said. That's what Apostle Paul chapter 2, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us. That we do not fear leaving this earthly body because we have a building prepared for us, made for us, not by human hands, but by God. Hallelujah. What a joyful thing this is. What a joy. What a joy. So here, we are look forward. We are looking forward to making our home in heaven. Then we will see an end to all these chaos that are taking place in our lives and on this earth.
we'll see an end to it. Dear friends, take heart. Heaven is a real place. And we are waiting. We are counting our days. And secondly, the picture comes, you know, that heaven is not only a real place, but it's also a very relevant place. See chapters one, uh, chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Very relevant. I saw the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals? And no one in heaven, no one on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look at it. Clear picture. Why the world is in, su is in such a mess today? Why? Why is it in such a big mess today? Because this, this scroll, the Lord has in his hand, this scroll says it all. He says that this document, that is something to do with the earth. That's why Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans 5 17 reminds us. For if by, one, by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Through Adam we lost it, but through Jesus Christ we regain it. Jesus Christ, our Lord, had done all that is necessary to get it back from Satan. And he will do that. You know, the, the, the chronological order of the book of Revelation is very easy. It said, chapter 1 says, the glorious resurrected Christ. It's very easy. Now see, this is the, this is the kind of the, the chronological order that is presented to us. In chapter 1 verse 19, it says, write the things which you have seen and the things which you are and the things which will take place after this. Now these are the three things that we have to bear in mind when we study the book of Rome, book of Revelation. I have sat in many classes, studied and read through many books. And this is so, I mean, the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals these things. Praise God for that. So he says, write these things which you have seen. What has he seen? He has seen the resurrected glorious Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, he had seen. And then, is, the writer says, and the things which are, that he's talking about the church. And now we studied about these seven churches, and that's the church history in, in totality. That's the church history. And now we are still in the church age, and one day we are going to be raptured, we are going to be taken, taken up by the Lord. That's why we need to be ready. We, the, 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 all the signs are there, friends, today. And as you live in this world, all these things are happening that are around us. We see that it is going to happen sooner or later. Uh -huh. Or should I say, very soon. Very soon. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear the trumpet call? Heaven is a relevant place. You know, in 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 12, we are told that even the angels, angels in heaven, they are so eagerly and so desirous to see what's going on here on this earth and planet earth. Praise God. And the Bible also said that heaven and angels rejoice when one sinner when one sinner turns away, in, the, in Luke's, chapter, Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 7 and 10, I'll read for you. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just, just persons who need no repentance. Verse 10, likewise I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God 
over one sinner who repents. So here, the angels decide to look into the things on the, of the earth, and also heaven and the angels rejoice over a turning. When, when one sinner turns away from his wicked and evil ways to the Lord, the heaven rejoices, the Bible says. Dear friends, in Romans chapter 8, verse 18 to 23, the Spirit of the Lord God assures of future glory. Don't ever, don't ever get discouraged about what's going on here on this earth. You don't get discouraged. Christians don't get discouraged because we are informed and we were told that these things are going to be. And that's why we all need to be in the presence of the Lord experiencing his power and his strength every day in our lives. So dear friends, as we read the scriptures this morning, the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into a glorious liberty of the children of God. So this is the assurance that the Spirit gives to the church. So I told you that heaven is an actual place. It's a real place. And secondly, heaven is a relevant place. We can relate to. Thirdly, heaven is a restorative place. It is a restorative place. That is the solution. That is the solution of the Lord. That's what we are told on that scroll. How it's going to be redeemed. All the information about how we are going to be redeemed is written at the back of the scroll. And only the Lord Jesus Christ is worthy to open it and tell us and do it so that we might experience it. That's the solution. The promise of Messiah. You know, in Genesis chapter, in Genesis uh, uh, Genesis chapter uh, 49, verses 8 and 10. Genesis 49, 8 and 10. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Now the reference Shiloh is to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the lion of, the lion of Judah. He is the lion of Judah. He is the promised Messiah. Now this scripture is promising us about, you know, that was the promise that was given to us about his first coming. And this Jesus Christ came as the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world, the Bible says. And he came to set the people free. That's why John the Baptist said, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world. Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus as the lion. The character refers to his second coming. Lion is a character that referred to his second coming. The lamb character refers to his first coming. See? Clear to understand that. Lions speak of his majesty. That's his sovereignty. He's the sovereign Lord. Lamb, Jesus is the lamb, speak of his meekness. As a lion, he is a judge, speak of the government of God. As a lamb, he is the savior. As a lamb, he is the one who was judged. The lamb, speak of the grace of God. See how 
contrasting these two pictures are the lion and the lamb and the lamb lamb and the lion talking about the same person lamb his first coming lion his second coming he's coming with a roar the bible says he's coming with judgment the bible says he is not coming to be judged but he is coming to judge the world jesus the lion of judah jesus the lamb of god beautiful pictures and also fourthly i want to tell you that heaven it's not only a, a real place it is not only a, a relevant place for us it's not only a restorative place but you know that it is also a responsive place it's also a, a communicational place beautiful picture that is given to us heaven is a communicational place we read from 9 uh, to 14 9 to 14 in chapter 5 9 to 14 indeed i will sorry 9 to 14 and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and the nations and have made us kings and priests to our god and we shall reign on the earth then i looked and i heard the voice of many angels around the throne the living creatures and the elders and the numbers of them was 10000 times and 10000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing friends this is this is what i just want to bring to your notice that heaven is an actual place heaven is a very relevant place heaven is a very responsive place and heaven is no did i say responsive no heaven is a restoration restorative place and also the heaven is a responsive place it is a communicational place that's what we read notice you know what they do here notice what they do they burst into a song of praise they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood they burst into a song of praise worship and praise has wonderful you know things that praise and worship does in our lives you know praise has the power to move us forward james chapter 5 verse 13 says is anyone among you suffering let him pray is anyone cheerful let him sing psalms to the lord ephesians 5:18 to 20 and do not be drunk with wine which is di- in which which is, which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in psalm and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making a melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all the things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ colossians 3:16 also another scripture that you can read for so the atmosphere in heaven as john sees apostle john sees is glorious is so glorious and the company is beyond compare he says the number of them was 10000 10000 times 10000 and thousands of thousands the number and the and the company in heaven is beyond compare verse 11 says heaven earth hell begin to praise jesus the lamb of god verses 12 through 14 we are reminded so dear friends this is what is happening in heaven glorious worship are you worshiping here many people i see that in church also they don't come for the worship they just 
avoid that time of worship and they come for the word. This is not a good habit at all. Because this is what we are going to do for eternity. To sing and praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we want to, I want to close with that thought today. Dear friends, there are four things that we've seen. Some of the characteristics of heaven. It's an actual place. It's a relevant place. And it's also a restorative place. And it is a communicational place. We sing praises to the Lord. We give glory to the Lord. You know, in the, in the 26th chapter of Second Chronicles, Uzziah, there was a king called Uzziah. He reigned for 52 years, the Bible says, in Judah. During his time, it was all <coughs> prosperous. You know, everything that he put his hand on to was prospered. The thing was going so well. He did a lot of things to Judah and uh, help people in various ways, in agriculture, in all the other aspects of the country. The economy was so rich and even the spiritual lives of the people were so rich. But finally, you know, the pride got into him and he was struck with leprosy and he died. In Isaiah 6, we see in the year King Uzziah died, Isaiah says that he saw the Lord. What a wonderful sight, isn't it? He saw the Lord in his presence. And the moment he saw the Lord, he said, I'm undone. I'm a man with unclean lips. And I'm a man who lives among, unclean, among people, those who are unclean lips. The moment you see the Lord, friends, what happens is that you see your unworthiness. And there's nothing that you and I can do except to sing his worthiness. Wonderful. Now that was the story of Uzziah. It was a sad story at the end of the day. But you know the good news? The good news is... John was told, don't cry. You don't need to cry. This is what I encourage you to do also. No matter what you are going through and you are upset about, the, about everything, you are upset about your health, you are upset about your job, you are upset about your family, are you? Don't cry. That's what the Lord tells us this evening. This morning, sorry. Don't cry. He says, don't cry. Why? Because the Lord is on the throne. He is in perfect control. Perfect control. The elders and the, the four creatures here, referring to the seraphims serving in the presence of the Lord, they, were, they all fall before him in humility, in adoration, in appreciation, and in worship. This is what we are going to do right throughout our lives. Eternity, eternity. If my trust is going to be in anything else than Jesus, you are going to be disappointed. Trust the Lord and worship Him and give Him the glory. None of those things will see you through or see me through in our lives. None. They have no power to do that. But Jesus, yes, He's able to. Sometimes the things that you have put your trust in might bring prosperity for some years, you know. Just for some years. But they are going to fail you. They are going to fail you. Put your trust in the Lord. Worship Him. Because when you see the Lord, as we've seen in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, a marvelous story that is behind it. You see the throne you see the lamb, you see, you, you hear about the, the, the lion, and you, you, you hear about the title deed, the scroll that was in the hands, and you see all this worship going on in heaven. This is what we are going to do forever and ever, friends. May the good Lord bless us. We don't need to cry about things that are happening in our lives, or what has happened in the past, or what is what you think that is going to happen in the future, don't. We don't need to be upset. We don't need to lose hope. We don't need to cry. Just look to the Lord. Look to the Lord and worship Him. Give thanks to Him. 
he has promised to undertake for all our needs in our lives. Gracious Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful morning that we are meeting together, hearing your word, fellowshipping with one another, partaking of the communion and in the being uh, partaking the the table this morning together. We want to thank you for the privilege, Lord, and pray that you would help us to apply what we have heard. Lord, we are in the throne room of our God, and we know that we are victorious. We are more than conquerors. I pray for all those who are here with us this morning and those who are going through difficulties and trials and difficulties in their lives. We thank you that you have the answer and you overcame the world and you are the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world and you are the lion of Judah that is coming to rescue us. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for the assurance that you have given us through your word this morning. Undertake for each one of us in Jesus' most wonderful, precious name, we pray and ask these things. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends. May the good Lord strengthen you through this word and make sure that you are going to experience heaven every day in your life. Till we meet again, God bless you. God bless you. Stay safe, friends. Thank you.